Jerry Darkus here again, working with the folks at Mad River Outfitters in Columbus, Ohio. Again, I, I've worked with Mad River for many, many years on a bunch of different levels, guiding form, hosting trips, sales rep for a group of different companies, and we're doing some fly tying videos uh, to, to actually help you folks out, show you a few different things. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, just another version of this sandwich series of flies that I do. Uh, it's gonna be a simple cricket pattern, a little bit of a takeoff on sandwich beetle I did earlier. But really the whole thing's based on gluing together uh, a couple pieces of these one and a half to two millimeter foam sheets. Uh, you use a spray adhesive to put those together. Then I cut strips out of them. And again, most time I'm running with uh, strips that are just a little over an eighth inch wide and I just slice them the length of, of what the foam is. So we're going to do a cricket pattern today, one I just call a sandwich cricket. Uh, again, a simple pattern. Uh, I've caught trout on it. I've caught smallmouth on it. It's great for panfish. I've even caught largemouth bass on it. So uh, a lot of different fish will eat it, uh, but let's, uh, let's get this one going for you and you can you can see how it's tied. So here we're working with a little longer uh, dry fly hook. This is a TMC uh, 5212 Daiichi 1280 uh, equivalent along that line is fine. Uh, using just a, uh, uh, a UTC 7DD thread. Again this is a great thread. It ties nice and flat. We're going to start and just lay a nice base of thread along the hook shank going back to uh, where the bend of the hook is and you know one another way to judge where to stop especially once you get into these longer flies is just go to a point in between uh, the barb uh, and the point of the hook and, and you're you're generally going to be in really good shape so I'm going to take my foam I've already cut this and sliced it you know this is a little uneven if it's a little over an eighth of an inch it really doesn't matter especially on this wider hook like this uh, but I'm going to tie this in so that the black side is down we're going to lash that in right there with just a little bit of it sticking out of the back give it half a dozen good wraps so that it stays in place and we can actually pick this longer piece up out of the way uh, for the present time. And if that spins a little bit right now, that's okay. We'll take care of that moving forward. Now, uh, we can, again, use a, a first style dubbing. We can use a, an ice dub, a synthetic dubbing on this. And this time, uh, I'm gonna use the ice dub. Again, this is a little coarser, a little harder material to work with, but let's, let's show you how you, uh, you know, you can make this work for flies like this. One thing with all dubbing, and particularly once you get into these coarser synthetics, just take it a little bit at a time. Just a, a small pinch of it, and again, when we put it on, we're going to roll in the same direction with even pressure. Okay, a little bit at a time. Again, we can get that to go on really nice. You can use a little wax if you, if you need to, but really if you're putting the dubbing on properly, uh, you, don't need, you don't need the wax. In a little bit of experience, you'll get used to it. Okay, again, this is just finger pressure. Another thing you can do if you're having a little bit of trouble would be wet your fingers. You know, even like that. That'll help tighten things up a little. Okay. So a couple inches of this should be pretty much all we need. And again, this is just putting a little bit of a body down. And, and really, as much as anything, it's a base to help lock the foam down. So I'm going to pull the foam back out of the way. Start wrapping the body forward. Take that up to just behind the eye. Again, I got one little strand sticking down there. I'm going to trim out. And then just add another little section of that ice dub going up. Let me get a little thread here. Okay, all right, we're good. We need a little bit of space behind the eye. 
Okay, so I've got that down like that. Again, I like to lock this foam on top of the hook, just to help hold everything together. So I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue or zap a gap up to about where that's going to fold down and get tied in. Lay that down like that. Hold it. Again, let's do a few loose wraps, then start to tighten down a little bit. And really, just the pressure of the thread will start to bind itself down. Okay. All right. Got that on there. I'm going to just pretty much cut that right in front of the eye. So we got a nice body laid down there with a little bit of shine to it. Again, the nice thing having this yellow on top here is on the water, again, you're going to be able to see this fly. Okay, that's the problem with a lot of uh, these beetle and ant patterns, cricket patterns, especially in low light or in a little choppy water, just can't see them. So this yellow back becomes very visible. All right, for legs, I'm going to use uh, the uh, uh, Bard Sexy Floss from Montana Fly again. Uh, and again, I'm not sure the color is too important, uh, but this is, this is an olive color. I think it'll look good you know, on this, uh, this cricket pattern from below, this darker color like this. And I think that having the bard, you know, finish on there, the bard color on there, I don't know, in my mind anyhow, I think it makes it more attractive looking uh, to the fish. I know it makes it more attractive looking to the tire anyhow. And in some cases, maybe that's the most important part. Uh, so I cut one section off of this uh, bunch. I'm going to split this in half. Cut that in half, take one length of it. I'm going to lay this on the front side. And again, I'm going to wrap that in so that it extends out on the front. Obviously, that's more than we need. We'll trim that out. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we got the same deal going there now. Okay, so we got an X pattern on both sides. And I'm just going to pick that up. Take the thread up in front. Take a standard whip finisher. And we will run oh, three or four turns on there once. Three or four turns again. Let's get that behind there. Yep, we got her. Trying not to lock any legs down. Got that going twice. Okay, we're good to go there. Let's trim these legs down a little bit to where we feel they, you know, kind of look on the natural bug a little better. Okay, yeah, let's hit that again. So again, they don't have to be perfectly even, but let's, you know, I think we want to get them kind of balanced. All right, so that looks pretty good, like there, like that. Now, we could leave this just like that and fish it, but I want to just put a little more into it. So I'm going to do something you don't normally do. I'm going to restart the thread at the back end of the fly. Okay, so just like we'd start the thread normally on the hook shank, going to do that to the back end of the fly and I'm going to add a back set of legs on here just like we did on the front. So I took one strand of that sexy floss, cut it in half. Now I'm going to do the same procedure, lock that on the side of the uh, body. Again, we put a little pressure on there. You can see that goes out, sticks out nice. Get it kind of level with the other ones. A little curve in there. Whoops, look at that. I wrapped a little thread over the hook shank or hook point, I'm sorry. So we'll get that cleared out. So again, that gives you an idea when you're wrapping. You always want to go at a little bit of an angle when you're back by that hook point. 
because there's times you will catch that thread on that hook point and actually uh, you can break the thread. Okay, so I've got the back set of legs put on. All right, now how do I tie the thread off? Well, there are a number of different things you could do. You could whip finish by hand. Uh, you know, I could just put glue on it and break it and it would probably hold. But here's where, you know, extended whip finisher can come in handy. I like these because look at that, man. How slick is that? Okay, makes allowing to reach back and do a whip, whip finish. You can use it on a lot of streamer patterns like zonkers and stuff, as well as bigger dries like this too to add legs and that. So extended whip finisher makes that process really simple. Let's trim those legs. So is this really a cricket? Well, not really. Uh, Kind of looks like one, but again, it's kind of a Chernobyl ant kind of deal, uh, that type of thing. So you've got those double legs down on the uh, uh, on the front and back of the body, and we're going to add just a little bit of a cement over some of these threads to just help lock everything in place and protect it. We want to be able to catch more than one or two fish on this fly. And that's one of the really nice things about foam is that it's a really durable material so uh, you can often get multiple, uh, you know, maybe a dozen or so fish on a fly like this before it falls apart. So there you go. Uh, the Sandwich Cricket, dark on the bottom, light color on the back for visibility, uh, great fish catcher, quick and simple to tie and a durable fly. Uh, thanks again for watching. Be sure to check out all the other stuff on Mad River's YouTube channel and check out madrivers.com too for all your fly fishing needs. Thanks again.